And welcome to MSI 2021. I am Medic, I'm joined by Vedius on the caster desk today for the first three games at least. And what games we have ahead of us, Vedius? Some right bangers gonna happen today. Indeed, my friend, I'm very much looking forward to our games ahead. We're gonna be starting off with Pentanet GG going up against RNG. And you heard it in the hype video, you've been hearing it all across social media. RNG are considered the strongest in the tournament right now. After a, I would say, very close game yesterday against Darmwon, uh, I think that the expectation is what? This is their fifth game against yeah. Pentanet now. Uh, I think that this one should be considered a pretty easy, uh, well, I say easy. We'll see what Pentanet can come up with. I think that RNG are the heavy favorites, I should say, rather, as uh, you know, they're looking. I think RNG will take this game quite seriously in the playing stage when they'd already locked in their spot. Um, I think that they could be a little bit more loose. You know, they did also have a bit of a, a roster swap in some of those games as well. Um, but in the gr in the Rumble stage, they it's very important to be able to get that top seed moving into the, the playoffs where seeding does have a large impact on who your potential opponent could be as well. So I'm expecting RNG to come out all guns blazing coming into this game. I'm expecting things like the carry top side. And I think that that is how RNG find a lot of success. When we saw them uh, yesterday in their game versus Cloud9, uh, Xiaohu being on that carry, the weak side bot, I think is how RNG typically like to approach the game. Uh, and I hope that we get to see a little bit more of that as the tournament continues, because personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Xiaohu on Gragas. Yeah, I think uh, watching him miss Body Slam bot lane uh, yesterday may have put in a lot of people's minds that he should be on carries. And you can see it's in Pentanet's mind as well. They'll get a bit of the Lucian to start us off here. Morgana banned away by RNG. And there's the Renekton taken away as well by Pentanet. So a lot of topside focus coming out from the side of Pentanet. Obviously, as we mentioned, these two teams have fought a fair number of times. And uh, Pentanet have had this opportunity to try a number of different strategies up against uh, RNG. They've had carries in the jungle, carries top lane, carries bot lane. They've kind of tried a wealth of different strategies. Uh, I believe we even had a uh, Kiana in mid lane coming out from Chaz playing up against Cryon, where Chaz said in the whole chat, I will solo kill you. And he did, to be fair, he did solo <laughs> kill him. He lost the game, but he did solo kill him. So we'll see what Pentanet have prepared for this rematch once more as Nordless now taken off the board. Varus, pretty consistent red side ban throughout this tournament. One of the highest bans uh, of MSI so far with the amount of pr uh, power, engage, and scaling that the champion does have. And the Kiana ban <laughs> does come out from RNG. So that respect being shown that they do not want to have to deal with it. <laughs> Well, we'll see where Pendernet decide to go. Straight away, they will lock in the Lee Sin. Expectations are at the moment that Lee Sin goes towards the top lane. And RNG resorting to comfort here. Gala eyeing up his Kaiser. Instead, it looks like they're going to go for the Udyr first. I like this a lot because I think that... Ooh, and the Rumble. Wow, okay, so remember that this Rumble could be used in both top lane and in mid lane, a very flexible champion, and you'd be denying pretty much all of the, the S tier junglers that exist in the current patch. So if RNG do decide to do this, I think that it's really going to pinch the champion pool availability for Pentanet. Um, uh, but it looks like Ooh, they're, not gonna do it. they're not even going to go for the Kaiser as well, which is slightly surprising to me. Instead, Cogmore will be picked. Now, I will say one of the last times these two teams met, Pentanet brought out Coglulu in the bottom lane, and they were 18,000 gold behind at the 24 <laughs> minute mark. So perhaps RNG are saying, anything you can do, we can do much better with this draft. I would love a Thresh pick from Pentanet. I think that if the expectation is that the Lulu is going to come through, I love Thresh as an answer. Yeah. And what better champion than to pair it up with other than, ooh, are they going to, they're going to flip the Cog Lulu and do Aphelios oh. Lulu themselves. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of the Aphelios Lulu just because of the range difference. I feel like that Cogmore with the W uh, can be very difficult to deal with. Uh, I would have preferred something like a Jinx because you have that extra bit of range. I think that uh, especially in the current meta with the late game fights, it can be very potent. But regardless, they're going to stick with the Aphelios. Uh, I think the 2v2 laning is going to be a little difficult when going up against the Karma. Of course, there is the possibility that this Karma is flexed, can be played in mid lane, can be played top lane. 
But in any case, I expect it to be in bot. I expect that primarily to be in the two versus two. And uh, we're going to get Enchanter supports, which is something yeah, we don't get very often. Flashbacks to Worlds 2018. Is it Arden Sensor Meta all over again? Was that 2017? Yeah, 2017, 2017. 2017, yeah. Arden Sensor Meta all over again, it seems. Moonstone Manure, of course, has been Love tapped over the last few patches, nowhere near as strong as it was, but you can still go Ardent Sensor Redemption, still a strong support item as well if you are going to go towards one of these enchanters. Rumble taken away here by RNG. They're not going to give Pentanet a strong jungler, or at least one of those S tier junglers. And alongside that, actually, they're going to take the Urgot out of the pool. So perhaps respecting the fact that Chaz could play this Lee Sin mid. Yeah, quite right. Biopanther has actively played the Urgot top. I also think it suggests RNG is considering a Gnar top lane pick. Does obviously offer a pretty safe laning phase if they want to blind pick that to give Kryon the counter pick. Is something that I think give them a lot of options. Ooh, instead they're going to go for the Jace. So I quite like this. Uh, putting Zhao once again on that carry top lane, something that he played a lot during the LPL playoffs. Uh, Noguri was able to successfully punish him a fair number of times on it. The question is, will Biopanther be able to do the same thing? Because with champions like the Urgot removed, what RNG is saying is you don't really have many carry top laners left that you could potentially stop us with. So Biopanther saying, yeah, I don't need a yeah, carry. I I'm think just agree. In tank. <laughs> Instead just goes for the Scion. We'll see where Pentanet wants to go with their jungle pick here. Olaf is the hub, but will be locked in. We've seen Wei pilot that a couple of times throughout this tournament. And it, this time it will be in the hands of Pabu. Strong carry, team him up with the Lulu in the mid game as well. He can run rampant True. through the enemy backline. True. The concern always is, is, is he going to be uh, able to keep pace with Wei, who is playing this Udyr, one of the strongest farming junglers in the early game? I agree with you, Menek. That's going to be a big question mark, as it looks like right now, RNG is going to round their composition out with the Silas. How many ults does he have to steal? Lulu ult? I mean, he's solid. got five videos. So uh, okay, works. okay. I mean, uh, the quality <laughs> of the ult that he can steal, good. And it looks like that... I'm actually not sure what happens when he steals uh, yeah, ult. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, does he just steal, like, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, always something new to learn when it comes to Silas ults. I was having this conversation yesterday about what happens when you steal Twitch's ult. Don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's not... What you think might happen just doesn't. Um, in any case, there are a couple of good ults to steal, but let's have a look at RNG's comp. A little bit more split map, a little bit more playing towards side lanes, kind of, again, how they traditionally played during the regular season of the LPL. A lot of priority towards the top side, uh, having a little bit more of a weak side bot. I think it's a little harder to play weak side bot when you are playing enchanters, but when you have an enchanter versus enchanter matchup, it's a little bit easy. I will also say RNG don't have the strongest or most reliable engaged tools to actually start fights off. So I would say RNG kind of need to get ahead. Now, they have been very good when playing against Pentanet at getting ahead in the early game, but this is a composition where I think we're going to see the same thing that we saw yesterday from RNG. Huge investment into Xiaohu, funneling resources into him, making sure that he has advantages in the early game uh, and is able to punish Biopanther up towards the top side while also trying to shut down Pabu and limit his presence in the early game. Once again, we see Pentanet facing off against RNG. Currently, it is 4-0 in favor of RNG, one of only two undefeated teams so far in the Rumble stage. RNG are looking to make it three in a row. Pentanet have struggled to put up a challenge, but we've already heard from their coach that they are willing to take the fight to the LPL number one seed. We'll see if they can do it as we get on to Summoner's Rift. Vedi, I will say, had a quick Google. Yeah. Looks like he takes the main guns ability. So if you take Infernum, if uh, Aphelios has Infernum, Silas will take that and flames everywhere. Oh. If it's Crescendum, you get hula hoops. So it depends on what Aphelios... What gun he has, has at the time. I yeah. see. I will say that was on a quick Google. I apologize if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Well, we'll find out if he even chooses to steal the uh, Aphelios ult because it might just not be worth it and instead he might just steal the uh, Olaf ultimate yeah, which is CC the Lee Sin ultimate, <laughs> the, Sion ultimate, the, Sion ultimate the Wild ultimate. Growth yeah exactly yeah. so I think that of the choices he has um, there are a number of better ones now let's Pentanet look to be doing something a little sneaky oh, here in this, this level one. Uh, I can see a ward has been put down, two wards in fact, uh, towards both the bot and top RNG. Getting a little bit cheeky here. They're looking to invade. You can see the question mark pings <laughs> coming down from Pentanet. Like, what are they up to? A bit of deep vision coming out from the RNG bot lane. But it seems to me that Pentanet are doing 
a similar play to what we saw from Cloud9. The, the Scion does a solo buff, may end up killing himself in order to secure that buff, and then perhaps holding bot side of the map. He's actually going to do Raptors as well. Um, but then you also get the red buff that you're currently seeing Pentanet steal away. So this will allow them to three buff while also getting their duo playing into Xiaohu. Now the advantages of this are that Xiaohu, it becomes harder for him to get ahead in the early game, largely because, lo and behold, he is playing in a two versus one lane. He's in a very awkward spot. Let's see what happens. Jumps onto Decoy. Predator's going to put quite a lot of damage down. Xiaohu does still have the flash and will be able to walk back underneath his tower, but he's going to be forced away from the jungle camps. Biopanther has died, picked up the red buff. Now he will let his zombie form expire, get a free base, and then look to go down towards the bottom lane as that wave pushes it. So currently still level one, but by taking the first cycle of Raptors, he's going to spawn the next level up, which allows Pabu to go and get them, but also denies Wave from actually being able to do them. You can see he's currently pathing towards Krugs, also potentially setting up for a dive towards the bot side of the map. Um, but there's not going to be anything else for him to steal. He's losing a lot of his top side camps, and this is going to give a huge advantage over towards Pabu. But let's see what Wave does as a result. The Wave is starting to stack. Bio Panther currently not level two, but there he's just going to tick over for it. And that's also why you're stealing away those camps is very valuable because it gives him that initial XP to get that level two. So he's not dived at level one, still has the flash. TP is available for Chaz. He's looking to base. But let's see what happens. Decimating Smash will clear out the minions. Tower being tanked. Bio Panther will fall. Gala gets it and survives. Takes away a red buff and way will walk in for the stun just to try and stop Bio Panther from clearing out this wave. No TP from Chaz, importantly. But Biopanther does still have a TP of his own and will use it to get back to this lane. And what was interesting there is Biopanther even had a minion dematerializer, which he used on the cannons, so he didn't even miss that CS. So he is still level three, as we see a bit of a trade in mid. Trying going in. Doesn't have an aggressive summoner, only the flash teleport, so no ignite or anything to help him win out this lane, but he will force Chaz away. Importantly, Xiaohu was able to survive a possible dive in the top lane. However, he is at two CS three and a half minutes into this game. Look at Biopanther. Yes, he has died. Only one of those actually went to RNG, but he has 20 more farm. He has tons, a thousand percent more CS than Xiaohu <laughs> right now. I'm telling you, that was a tactical death, yeah. Medic. I, I think that was, in the rare instance where you can say that death was worth it, just because of the experience and gold that he was able to get that Xiaohu could not get on the top side. Yes, Xiaohu did not lose his life, but Look at how far behind he is right now. The fact that Biopanther has such a huge level advantage, the fact that Xiaohu in this early laning phase was put so far behind. And also, he was able to push in the bot wave, which means that as it's now starting to bounce back, Pentanet have enough time to be able to swap towards the bot side and actually catch that farm. Now, Gala and Ming, because they were first on the swap, they are actually a little bit ahead in CS because they were able to push in bots, get that early reset thanks to the kill. They then get to spend their money and then they immediately go to top side. But RNG are constantly trying to play catch up here as we see Chaz once again getting very low decoy and Pabu in the mid decoy is going to try and whimsy himself forward getting the movement speed but can't quite catch out crying who will just catch this wave himself I just want to come back to something that Emily said on the analyst desk she wanted to see level ones from Pentanet. She wanted to see something a little bit more explosive, something a little bit more inventive, and that is what we have seen here. Yes, the gold is even right now, but Wei lost his first red buff. He has lost his entire top side quadrant, and now is behind in this jungle matchup. And you can see Pentanet have been able to keep the early game even, which is not what has happened through the other four times these teams have faced. It's very true, Medic. Let's have a look now as junglers have made their way towards the bot side of the map. I was really hoping that we could see some sort of like stacked wave dive onto top lane with yeah. Pabu being level five, Bio Panther two levels up onto Xiaohu, with that wave slowly starting to mount. I thought that they would try and set something up, but all they're actually doing is trying to push in bot wave. So guess what? They can swap again. I think this can be a little bit dangerous because if you don't time it right, Gala and Ming can set up a freeze, which can end up denying a lot of farms. Xiao, who's also able to keep getting the CS advantages. And you can see that RNG are actually going to convert this into a Drake. And I think that at some point, you have to just commit to either the 2v2 and the 1 versus 1. But for the time being, Pentanet are going to keep this swap going. They're going to send Praedith and Decoy back up towards the top side of the map once more. They're going to catch this wave. And given that they are on the top side of the map and the Herald spawns in about two minutes time, I'd like to see Pentanet play towards that objective because if they can, they can start breaking down these towers, keep investing money into their bot lane, which is you expect to be the primary carry, especially with this Lulu on the lineup. 
And I think that Pentanet's whole game plan here is just avoiding these two versus twos while also denying Xiaohu as much farm and experience as possible. See Biopanther about 200 gold ahead of Xiaohu in the 1v1, but it hasn't been a 1v1 at all. As at the moment, it is a 3v1 in the bottom lane. On top of a force goes wide. Crying took the wrong train, had the wrong ticket, but he still goes for the dive. Biopanther just leveled up. It's going to lock down. Crying and Crying is down. Biopanther ticking to the ignite will eventually fall. But what a great 1v3 outplay from the Australian top laner. That was totally worth it for Biopanther. Look, the TP even coming out top lane so that Wei does not get dived. Fa three versus two. I don't think Pentanet can risk this, but I now want to see Chaz pushing in this mid wave. Maybe even, actually, has he set up a bit of a freeze in mid? It looks like, no, I'm surprised that he wouldn't try and push this wave in immediately. He doesn't need to hold this wave. Getting the priority and the pressure is way more valuable, I think, than moving with your team. Right, fight happens. Ragnarok coming out way very low, has to flash away, the chase is on, but Crying was there in time, and Decoy, well, he's next on the menu. Two quick kills to RNG. This is exactly why I think Chaz should have just pushed in that mid wave. Push it in, get the wave underneath the tower, and group up with your team. Contest, use your numbers advantage, use the situation and the opportunity that Crying is actually dead to gain more advantages. Instead, it was Pabu and Decoy versus the top jungle of RNG. You're not going to win out on that 2v2 skirmish. They even flashed in, Crying arrived to the scene as well and RNG end up coming out ahead in the skirmish and you can just see I feel like in this situation Pentanet needs to be using their waves and their numbers advantage to contest these objectives he flash over commits and I feel like that they were likely going to die anyway especially with the arrival of Kryon and that actually now puts gold back into the pocket of Xiaohu yes he's still behind in experience which is a big deal but Getting that money is going to be really helpful for him getting back into this game. Yeah, let's take a look at exactly where we are in terms of state of the game. There's a 400 gold lead for Biopanther in the top lane, but look at the AD carries. Gala is 700 gold ahead. Even though Wei was put behind in the early game, he's basically even with Pabu now as well. And in the mid lane, there's a 500 gold lead for Crying. So this early rotational play from Pentanet hasn't paid off as much as they'd like. They have stemmed the bleeding, but they are still bleeding slowly. Exactly right, Medic. I think that Pentanet, the premise was good, but the execution starting to falter just a little bit. I really like this idea. Biopanther was in a really good position, but I think Pentanet was just too committed to avoiding That's standard lane yeah. matchups, you know? They were just really trying hard to avoid playing into Gala and Ming, and now it's kind of at a point where Gala and Ming are gaining so many more advantages. Now, it's not to say that Praedith and Decoy aren't getting money themselves. Praedith hasn't died yet. Um, but the advantages that are being gained everywhere else in the map for RNG is definitely something that they need to deal with. I think that this Herald is going to be really important. We talked about it, but look at where RNG is now. They have their bot lane on the top side of the map, which means that Wei now is in a much better position to be able to contest it. They're going to be able to use that to get the top tower as Xiaohu. He's getting denied even more farm, but he's going to live. And at this point, that is way more valuable because the bot lane is just continuing to get resources and RNG is just ahead of the game. And it's the second time we've seen Pentanet actually move their bot lane away from the neutral objective. First time it was that dragon in the bot side that Wei was able to pick up because Gala and Ming were down there. This time they moved their bot lane away from the Rift Herald. And now Rift Herald is on Wei. He can look to put that down towards the top side if they want for the plates to take down that tower. Or he can even funnel plates into Crying in the mid lane or even into Xiaohu, who is once again getting dive. Tries to jump in onto Pabu. Pabu doesn't have the Ragnarok, and Xiaohu with the Flash will survive once again. The thumbs up comes through. He's saying, you know what? You just invested. Your AD carries Flash into trying to kill me, and it didn't work out. Meanwhile, RNG have their eyes set on Chaz. Chaz gets kicked back oh. straight into the stun. Crying and Wei styling on fools as Chaz goes down. Top lane turret will fall. That's all five plates up there. And they will look to put that Rift Herald down mid lane as well, I assume, to funnel more gold into Crying's pocket. Beautifully played from Crying and Wei. Stealing away the lease in ultimate to then set up the stun for Wei. Just execution was clean. They're going to get themselves even more plates in mid. Not going to use the Herald just Still got yet. got two minutes. Two minutes to use it, so. But quite right. There's plenty of time for RNG. They've been able to balloon the goalie to 3K. And again, like, really like the premise, really like the initial idea from Pentanet. I just think that after the initial stages, some of their execution started to falter. They will be able to get the bot tower, uh, currently sitting at a 2K gold deficit, but mid lane is now falling behind. The early jungle advantage they were trying to get is also starting to decline. And RNG, even though they've kind of been chasing a lot of Pentanet in the early game, they've actually been able to find a lot of kills. They found that skirmish up top. They found another big pick in mid as well. And they still have that Rift Herald up. They're disposed on what they're going to do is likely move their bot lane into mid so they can 
still get priority and then contest Drake, which is currently alive. Kryon has the TP, so should a big fight break out, he's able to join the freight. Uh, and he can also just take the Krugs that are sitting top lane as well. So really good lane assignments from RNG means that they're still going to get anything and Pentanet's going to continue to be denied. I think the question for Pentanet is at what point do you take a fight now? Are you looking at that next Drake after Wei takes this one in five minutes time? Do you need two, three items on your Aphelios before you can look to take a big team fight? Because right now RNG are out macroing them and this is what we saw through the group stage, through those last four games these two teams have played, Arm and G are just that little bit better at times. Pentanet, though, do still have the tools. Aphelios Lulu so strong in the late game. Chaz on the leasing could catch someone out. If he can get Gala, Gala is, he's dead, he's donezo. And then on top of that, you don't have as much DPS. Crying can put out the damage later on on the Silas, but right now he doesn't even have a mythic item doesn't even have that Everfrost complete, so he will be behind the curve in terms of pure damage. Thing is, I kind of feel like RNG's comp still outscales. Yeah. Um, just because I think Olaf... Oh, hang on a second. All right, here comes the Dragon's Rage. <laughs> Center opposite sides of the map. Decoy trying to flank here, but that's a support level six Lulu. Not going to be able to do too much as Chaz gets a taste of his own medicine and is just about able to survive. So you're kind of seeing what I meant with the whole scaling thing, right? Where RNG just have such powerful side laners, even though Xiao Hu is behind, Kryon is not. And I don't think anyone can really stop him on a side lane. And the, what RNG have been praised for is their map movements, their understanding of how to manage their waves. And I think that when you give them a split push comp like this, they know how to play the map very well. They know how to use their pressure. And look, Wei is here to cover Kryon as he pushes in top wave. They can also collapse and help mid, but Gala is just diving with Ming and saying, you know what, this tower belongs to us. Get off it, we're gonna secure. And I believe what that is now, 11 plates that yep. they have secured in this early game. So. As great as the strategy was, it has not resulted in an advantage for Pentanet. If anything, Gala has just been allowed to free farm. And this is why RNG is so difficult to deal with, because you sit there and think, we have to stop Xiaohu, because RNG puts so many resources into Xiaohu. When he's playing a carry top lane, we have to deny him and put him behind. And then when you do that, you're then not dealing with Gala. Yeah. And the thing about Gala is he, he knows how to farm. He's very efficient with his farming. He knows how to take resources. And then he's just a monster in team fights, right? And so... Like, RNG seem to have multiple threats that, you, unless you can, like, go pound for pound, toe to toe with them across the board, they feel like such a difficult team to be able to deal with. And I think that's why they get so much of their praise. And look at Kryon right now, still hovering, sitting in the side lane, looking to use the power that he does have. Yeah, Chaz has stepped a little bit too far forward here. Didn't have vision in his own jungle. Could try and dodge away to a warden, just about escapes from the abduct there out of Kryon. Chaz will be able to walk his way back all the way around here. And uh, maybe we'll see Pentanet trying to find a catch in one of these side lanes. Top lane seems to be the key point right now as Kryon was pushing up, but you can see he pays respect, he backs away. And uh, for the moment, RNG have pretty much total control of this map. So second Herald is spawning in a little bit, and this time around, Xiaohu has the TP. But RNG ideally want to give him the opportunity to get back into the game. So they're going to leave him bot to push as RNG commit into trying to get a little bit more control of a top side. Chaz and Kryon now in another duel. Here come the TPs. Pentanet actually have a lot of players on this top side of the map. Chaz with the flash kick tries to knock Kryon back. He's going to kick him away, and Bio Panther knocked to Sunday. Ragnarok coming out, and there's the shutdown. Pabu's on the chase, looking for Wei. Ming trying to Join the fight. Meanwhile, down towards the bottom side, Gala's been caught out. Praedith flashes forward and he gets the kill. AD carry versus AD carry, and Praedith comes out on top. Two quick kills to Pentanet. So it ends up being two for two overall. Oh, Praedith died to the explosion. Bio Panther has to invest this teleport to help out his mid laner. But look at what's happening bot lane. Zhao, who is getting himself towers, he's pushing in these waves and he's still benefiting. He's getting himself back into the game. And again, this is what's so obnoxious about RNG. You sit there, you think you found a good fight, you think you found an objective, lo and behold, Xiaohu is doing something in a side lane, and it feels like that even though that was a promising fight for Pentanet, it ends up still being advantage over to RNG. Yeah, it's a 5,000, well, 4,500 gold lead for RNG right now. Two dragons to none, two, uh, three towers to one, and mythic items complete across the board. Actually, for both teams, pretty much. Only Decoy lagging behind a little bit on that first purchase. So perhaps we'll see Pentanet at, uh, at relatively even strength when we get into this next fight, of course, there will be some extra gold in the RNG inventory. So we saw the skirmish up towards the top side in the new Axe Effect replay. A good flash kick from Chaz, but they don't quite have the damage to kill Kryon before. And so what happens here? Gala, in a one versus two, 
the thing is when Praedith can get the range gap closed, then it's winnable for him. But you saw how much he had to invest in actually to get that kill. I love the little googly eyes on Gala <laughs> when he died there as well. Um, it, Kog'Maw just has so much damage. And this is another reason why I think RNG have that scaling advantage. Because even though, yes, they don't have that Lulu support, the range... Oh, hang on a second. This is not looking good for Pentanet. Yeah, way coming round. Chow's going to be able to jump across the wall. Papa's already popped the Ragnarok here. He's going to get stunned up. And RNG on the chase. Wild goes across the wall. Will just be enough to save Pabu for the moment. There's a Blast Cone available. Abscon goes wide. Bio Panther is going to get rooted by that tether. Gala now opening up. Kogmo does so much damage. But Praedrith just waiting in the bush. And the Chakrams of Death start to rain down on RNG. Crying going in with the Unstoppable Onslaught, but Praetid still has great guns for this fight, and here comes the counter engage. The pain train has entered the station, but Chaz tries to dive into the back line. Tempest hits on four. One for one so far as the dragon goes down in favor of Pentanet, but look at how low RNG are. If Pentanet can somehow get forward, they would be able to pick up a little bit more. Great fight there from Pentanet. They get a kill, and they get the dragon. The fact that Pentanet is 5,000 gold behind, yet still found a successful fight, just goes to show the resilience of this team. I thought that was doom and gloom as they were trying to invade in the enemy jungle, but they end up bouncing back, and they actually got a very close fight. Huge props to Chaz. He did a lot of damage, and uh, I want to see in the replay exactly how much damage he does. So let's just keep track of Chaz in this fight. The initial engage comes through from Cryon. RNG is committing to the Drake, and then the ult comes through from Biopanther. The Q does land onto the Cogmore, comes through, and then gets the E onto four people, which of course is the skill that you max on mid lane these in, forces the flash out from Gala and they're able to actually turn the fight in their favor. So it ends up being one for one, but they do get the Drake. They deny that soul point away from RNG. And uh, Pentanet still showing that they do still have some fight left in them. The problem is the side laners were only getting stronger for RNG. Xiaohu, who was two levels behind Biopanther pretty much the entire game, is now caught up and is ahead in farm yep. as well. The Kog'Maw has completed the second item with the Phantom Dancer. Everfrost now finished for Kryon, and if you just look at the gold, it is advantages just across the board for RNG. Every single lane is ahead for RNG. Rift Herald will be secured by them as well. Gala gets himself a red buff just to help output even more DPS on that Cogmore. With the Phantom Dancer complete, he is going to be a terror when we get on into these next fights. But thankfully for Pentanet, they have delayed that a little bit, you know? They've got three minutes before the next Drake comes up. Maybe this Rift Herald will be used mid by RNG to try and break into the tier two line. But for the moment, Pentanet are able just to stand back let RNG control most of the map and actually not lose too much. So now, vision control being set up towards the top side. The wave starting to push. I'm curious. I don't think Kryon is... Is Kryon freezing that wave in bot lane? Let me have a quick... No, I don't think he is. Uh, he's just kind of letting the wave come into him. Still had his teleport available. Likely wants to try and sync up the waves because he knows that his team is going to reset soon. So... Uh, Notice that he's not going to overextend. He's a little bit worried about how much control he has over the map. Do also want to quickly mention, we didn't talk about it in draft, but Pentanet do have what is effectively a full AD composition. Uh, and I know a lot of question marks came out about Darmon's full AD composition yeah. yesterday, but I think one of the biggest things that people need to remember is that sometimes comps can't always itemize against full AD. Mm -hmm. uh, so Udyr in this situation, very difficult to kill. Right. Yes, of course. But he also doesn't really do a lot of damage. And True. he's not that much of a threat the later into the game that you go. Uh, however, you look at the rest of RNG, there's no armor True. anywhere, right? So even though Pentanet's comp is full AD, uh, it doesn't really matter that much yeah. just because of how hard it can be to itemize against. Now, admittedly, as the game goes on, things like Zonyas are going to be really powerful for Kryon, but that's also why I think that they do have oh, that scaling advantage. As Praedith, as you rightly identified, is on it. Yeah, Praedith, his spidey senses were tingling there. He was like, hang on, why did they just suddenly disappear? Do they see me? Um, but he's still going to try and go for the Raptors, which is a little risky. But yeah, that's, I just wanted to make that comment because obviously this full AD comp, I still think it will get outscaled later yeah. on into the game, uh, but I think that's more to do with the range advantage, the fact that they do have very strong side laners, um, and I think that Pentanet's damage is just difficult to land. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Kedra yesterday about this, and he was talking about how Olaf against mobile AD carries can be very difficult to play, and like against an immobile carry, you sit there, but it's not immobile, it's got a Karma next to it yeah. too, so that Olaf sits there and thinks that you're getting on top of it, and then this Karma just offers so much peel. 
RNG trying to up the tempo of the game just a little bit as they start off the Baron. 7,000 HP on it. Pabu's on his way. TP coming in from Chaz, but that's very, very deep, and this Baron might be gone before he can even get there. Pabu running in as quickly as he can, but the Baron has almost gone down. It's taken, secured by Gala, but here comes the fight. Xiao Hu locked up. Decoy doing what he can in the middle of the sword. Bio Panther still alive somehow as well. That's two quick kills. Chaz jumps onto Wei. Cry and tried to flash away, but Pabu is having none of it. The Baron was a bait, mate. Pentanet GG get themselves a huge team fight in the Baron. That is four dead on the side of RNG. We talked about how it can be difficult for Pentanet to get on top of RNG, but I don't think Gala had his flash and he was locked in a pit with these Pentanet members that were not stopping to get onto the back line. Good execution, good shutdown of RNG, and you can see that that Red Bull Baron power play is not going to work out as nice as they would like. They don't have the AD carry at all for this fight, Betis. This is a 4v5. And it's crucial. Again, look, the, the Kog'Maw doesn't have the flash up, so he's just stuck in the pit. Zhao, who ends up getting melted with this duo of Lee Sin and Olaf. And again, like they can just do so much damage, especially with the Lulu supporting them as well, if they're just given the opportunity to do so. Getting on top of the RNG comp is the hard part, but once they get there, they can just melt through them. You can see the reaction there. <laughs> just a little bit. Yep. Uh, okay, that happened. They, they quite do. go the way they want it. Importantly, Ming does still have Baron, so he can still use that to help push out these waves. Rift Held was still available for Wei, so he's going to put that down in the mid lane. Dragon was taken by Pentanet while we were in that replay. And now with the Rift Held charging in and he's Baron up minions. Praedith, once again, not with the team. He was pushing out bot lane. This Rift Held is going to get a charge before Praedith can get there. RNG getting two waves of pressure. Top lane now at that tier two. There's the Rift Held charge forward, but now Pentanet Need to be a little bit careful around this fight because Gala once again has his flash up. Crying, trying to dash forward, looking to see perhaps if there's a little avenue, a little crack in the armor of Pentanet. For the moment, they will hold strong. That inhibitor still stands. A minute left on the Baron, and it looks like RNG will get a tier three in the mid lane and a tier two in the top lane, and not too much more out of it. So, a couple good fights for Pentanet, but unfortunately, they're yet to really swing the game back into their control. 23 minutes in, RNG sit with a comfortable gold lead, control over the map, good deep vision that they don't really care about losing right now because they're going to look to push out these waves and then reset. And the Zonyas now come through for crying. Going to make these fights a lot harder for Pentanet to actually win out on. I will say, one of the last time these two teams met, it was an 18,000 gold lead for RNG at 24 minutes. I will say that five five and a half thousand is a little bit better than that here a for little Pentanet. Bit, a little Definitely bit. an improvement for them since the group stage. And I'll also note RNG yesterday when they played against C9 had a couple of mid-game fights where they faltered, where C9 were able to get back into it. And now we've seen them do it against Pentanet. Perhaps the Baron a little bit of a greedy play. Of course, RNG still very much in the driver's seat of this game right now. I mean, it's funny. Um... Uh, I have to give big thanks to Kelsey Moser for how much she talked to me about RNG coming into this tournament. And one of the big things she used to talk to me was about how RNG, um, their team fighting is very mixed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, like, obviously in playoffs, they had some fantastic team fights, right? And even here at MSI, we've seen some really impressive team fights from them. But we've also seen some not so great team fights. Yeah. Um, and a large part of that is just because they're willing to fight even when they don't have the best 5v5 comp. And a large part of what we've been talking about here for RNG is they outscale in the sense that like they have really strong side lanes, mm -hmm. right? They can they can kind of play the map better. They don't have to get into 5v5s. They have like this huge range advantage with the Cogmore as well. But if you just front to back 5v5 team fight, like this, this is how they can find these advantages, getting these small picks. Oh, look at the damage from Gala. Ooh. Almost kills him off with a bio. Okay, Barrage can't quite land. The final auto, uh, the final ultimate there. And it's things like this that I think RNG are very good at. You know, controlling that space, forcing you to come and face check them, and then finding that pick so they can get those advantageous fights. But if they fall prey to these 5v5s in situations that are not ideal for them, that is ways in which Pentanet, I think, can actually claw their way back into the game. The question is, how many good fights can they actually find against RNG? Because as we saw against Cloud9 yesterday, RNG are very quick to recognize their failings and then pivot and change. And you can see Xiaohu putting up pressure in a side lane, still has his TP available, pushing in that wave, stealing away camps. Cryon looking to reset, spend a little bit more of that gold and also his TP is coming up soon. So RNG are just kind of applying pressure all across the map and denying Pentanet as much as possible. You can see Pentanet there trying to set up a little bit of a trap bush. Pabu's going to walk all the way towards this blue buff and realizes Wei and Xiaohu are in close proximity. 
and will retreat out of it. 7,000 gold lead for RNG. A minute on the next dragon. It will be the third of the game for either of the teams that ends up securing it. No Ocean Soul yet on Summoner's Rift. And importantly, Gala at three items with the Runans, Phantom Dancer, and the Gale Force already complete, whereas Predith is still waiting on that Lord Dominic's regards, I assume, on the Aphelios. Once he does get it, I think Pentanet are just going to be like, five-man ball. we got go. we got to do it at some point. It's the Protoss A move, right? You just get all of your Stalkers, you get all of your Zealots, yes, and you A move totally. into the enemy. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. Never played Sargon Join to do in it my life, but uh, that. Blade and Soul, uh, you get your Kung Fu Masters. You don't. You get played that game. other Kung Fu Masters. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I only know Kung Fu Master because I know it's what you yeah. play. Okay. <laughs> Death Ball also, you could just use League of Legends terms. You, oh, know? you could. They group as five, run it down mid. Look, yep. here's the group as five. Let's see if they run it down mid. The Cyan Ultimate is available, wait on the flank. Pabu will spot him out, crying, trying to get in there as well. Ragnarok is available for that Olaf. He takes the Everfrost, he eats the CC, Dragon's Rage. Now stolen away by crying. Gala and Mink can chase by a Panther, he's all on his lonesome. Ooh. Unstoppable force hits the wall. Way trying to get in here as well, but you've got to watch Chaz and pa Praedrith. They are the two key carries in this fight, and Chaz was almost down, but Praedrith has killed off crying. One for one, mid laner v mid laner have both gone down. For the moment, Pentanet able to survive. Shao who dives in. Prey is going to kill off Ming as well. Gala and Wei, the only two left alive. And Baron is on the cards for Pentanet. We talked about it, man. RNG keep just trying to. They, they took the bait. They went for the 5v5. And Pentanet just straight up outplayed them. Gala's no positioning way. was flawless. Prey Look at the hula hoop of doom. He's got all the shotguns. They fall off. Infernum, Calibrum, Gala stepping Prey forward. Prey is still alive. Gala has to flash away. Pabu and Biopanda go back to the Baron with a 6,000 HP on it still. Pabu's going to flash onto the honey fruit. The living artillery. Doing a lot of work here, Prejudice. Trying to dodge around. He's playing DDR more than he's playing League of Legends right now. Oh, he's dancing. The knockup goes in. Way goes down. Pentanet once again went out the fight. Gala trying to get into this, but now with the TPs coming back from Xiaohu and from Pentanet, we're going to see this brawl continue. Crying behind enemy lines, but Pe Pentanet spot him out. They know he's there. Counter TP. Xiaohu's looking for the mid in him. No way. Did they do this again, Betty? Is they're looking for the back door? The waves are being pushed in top and bot. Aren't you? Recognize that RNG have TP'd in, and now Cryon goes for another fight. Jazz has the kick, he knocks it oh! off, and Cryon is doing exactly that. He pops the stopwatch to try and survive for the moment. Xiaohu going in as well. Cryon's still alive. Xiaohu's still alive. RNG's still alive. And Pentanet tried as they might, but you just can't kill the LPL. Oh my goodness. That was so close from Pentanet. They did so many things right. They punished the misexecution from RNG, but then the TPs come back, the re-engage happens, and then Gala says, I'm not done with you yet. Triple kill from the AD carry comes through. RNG win out the fight, and they're gonna look to end the game. Try as they might, Pentanet could not get the GG because Royal never give up. Oh, 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 RNG are being pushed to their limits. Woo! But I, I think this also showcases some of the weaknesses of RNG, where sometimes they just overcommit to a fight. That's not how they wanted to win that game. They were playing the side lanes well. Pentanet then group up mid as five because they had top and bot pushing, and then RNG went for the fight. And initially, I was going to say, you can see how difficult it is to get onto the Cogmore, but it, the same can be said for RNG when they're diving onto that Aphelios. He's just melting them, as you rightly said, with the hula hoop of death. And Pentanet, they came so close, but... The re-engage, the patience from RNG, they were able to turn it around, and my goodness, Pentanet, huge credit to them, because they have clearly shown improvement. Yeah, you take a freaking bow. Your region was dismantled, and you're able to stand against RNG. Uh, for now, though, every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, Pentanet arrived just in time to win a fight at this Baron. It was a 4v5, Edius. It certainly was, and this is a situation where, again, RNG's comp just doesn't thrive. The front line, the meatballs, the, the bruisers of Pentanet's comp just thrive in this sort of a situation, in this arena where they can fight to the death. And Chaz, he had some sick Lee Sin mechanics in this game and he was able to make some clutch stuff happen. And this was one of those big fights where we thought Pentanet may very well have been able to turn it around. At the very end, it was just so unfortunate. If one of those TPs was not available,
yeah. then Pentanet, maybe they're able to do so much more. But like, Ooh. huge props to Gala, because like, I think he saved the game at the end of it. His Kog He distracted them so much. It was so end. good. So like, huge props to Gala. Uh, very incredible performance, not only here, but throughout the entire tournament. And what a great game to start. What a great game. Day. After the break, Ender will take a closer look at the lane swap from Pentanet before it's time for a rematch between Damon Kia and Cloud9. Dear me, I just wanted to tell you that soon, everything you know will change. You're part of the breakout, part of an elite group of individuals that launched the global movement. The pioneers that changed the sole definition of a gamer. I'm you, from the future. And I just wanted to tell you that your future will be legendary. Exceed the game, unleash the future.
you? Yes, you. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. RNG remain undefeated at MSI 2021, but I want to take a look at the lane swap that occurred in their game versus Pentanet GG in Neighborhood Tactics presented by State Farm. And honestly, this is exactly what we wanted to see from the team. And you might ask, why do you go for some kind of lane swap crazy shenanigans at the start? Well, number one, it's about this sign. It's about getting Bio Panther through the early game. You look at Scion versus Jace, that is not a happy matchup for Scion. Yeah, he's going to scale, but early on, you're going to fall behind in CS, and you're going to be pushed under your tower consistently. So, Pentanet, throw it all uh, throw it all off the table. They go for something a little bit crazy here. Now, importantly, you need this Scion almost always in a modern lane swap because for a couple of reasons. Primarily, though, to get through the jungle in the early game. So you'll see here there are great wards from Pentanet at the start to see if there's any sort of late invade attempt by RNG. That allows Scion to freely clear his own jungle. At the same time, you've got this top lane late, top side late invade rather, that allows them to take away all these camps from way. Bio Panther on the sign is going to allow himself to execute to the red buff, which is exactly what you want so he can speed through that camp and then allow his uh, health bar to tick away and execute back. Now, importantly, you'll notice red buff not lost on the Scion. Scion or any champion really, when you execute to jungle camps, you hold on to your buff. Now, Scion isn't quite level two, but he's very, very close. And with the early depth, he now has himself a cloth armor to make him a little bit more difficult to go for the dive later. At the same time, Pabu's taken away the top side camp. So what can Wei do? There's no real camps from on the bot side. There's really just the Krugs. And then it's the inevitable dive. Bio Panther does not waste his TP. He's going to walk all the way back to lane. And at the same time, Xiao, who was actually chunked out big time in the 2v1 top side. So he's sitting on just two CS to the eight that Bio Panther got from jungle camps. Now, Bio Panther, not just about to be level two, not just with a couple of items to start it off. Also, the minion dematerializer. That's going to be a big deal in just a second. Bio Panther, he expects to die here every single time. But that's why you pick Scion, because his passive is nuts. It's going to allow him to clear away all these minions under the tower. He even uses the minion dematerializer after he dies to get the cannon minion, not just because it gives him by far the most gold out of all these minions, but also because it stops RNG from having that big minion, that big HP bar to keep freely hitting away on the tower. Also, because he held onto his TP, it allows him to come back, and he's so darn tanky, RNG cannot look for the repeat dive. So they're going to go back to base, go for the swap. Again, Xiao who cannot get back in the lane. It's 19 CS to 2. 19 to 2. That's absolutely crazy. So RNG, what do they say? They're like, okay, guys, we have to try and match this lane swap somehow. We got to send our duo back towards the top side of the map. But Bentonet, no problem. We're just going to allow them to do that. We can swap our own because we bounced this huge minion wave into the tower. Xiao who only just now hit level two, and he's going to have to push that next wave. So as Pentanet walk back down into the bot side of the map, you'll see Lulu is allowed to pair up with the jungler. Everything is looking just fine for Pentanet and RNG continuing to try and dodge away from this lane swap. Well, now they are recalling in the top lane. They're recalling in the bot lane. Those waves are also pushing in, so it allows Pentanet to be in this position where Scion gets to freely farm in the top side, Aphelios gets to freely farm in the bot side, they can potentially set up freezes too. All the while, they're channeling three players in the mid lane to look for some pressure because Chaz has been getting bullied in that mid lane. So very important that they're able to get through the early game uh, very nicely. There, Scion's going to pick up a whole lot of minions as well. And while Praetith is a little bit behind and did lose out on the kill, that of course went over towards Gala. Frankly, Pentanet are perfectly happy with this. You'll notice, uh, of course, gold overall is even 7.2 on either side, but Pentanet were expecting to be behind. And now you've got a 30 CS Scion versus 11 on Jace. That Jace also started the game with a Cole. He is not happy at all with only 11 CS. And you even have the benefit of Olaf being ahead of Udyr in a matchup where you'd expect the Udyr can clear a little bit faster early on and get a CS lead. So it was an even early game overall, but ultimately this is what we want to see from pentanet.gg and I'm so glad they pulled off this lane swap and showed some preparation, showed some really good early game planning. Now after the break we'll see if Dom on Kia can get their revenge on C9 as we'll be back for the rematch in just a few minutes. Deserve it bow there from Darmon Kia. They're not going to be happy with how today is went. However, it's not emergency stations just yet. 
for our 2020 world champions. Sven has free reign to open up. Perks here will kill off Khan and C9 win the fight. Oh my word, Cloud9, is this enough?